Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Today's sermon is called Source Material. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do, who you're about to touch, who you're about to speak to. Speak to me, speak through me. Just let your presence flow this place. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, um, um, as I told you a few weeks ago, I love this show called Crime Junkie. Um, quick recap, uh, Crime Junkie is basically a proper, um, a podcast where they, re- where these two ladies from Indiana research true crime. I've gone through all the mainline episodes and hopefully I can join the fan club when I get enough money someday to go through all those hundreds of episodes. I'm I'm done I'm done from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty four. It it was so great watching uh, listening to seven years of episodes like that, it was it was awesome. And um, when every time they have re, re uh, research material, um, the uh, actually flowers calls it source material. It's it's basically just. Uh, research material and where they get their information. And uh, I started thinking of the term source material and and um, like how to uh, research uh, sources and um, how to make sure they're credible because I could imagine online you get all these, uh, all this material that is not credible. That just, um, is people talking and talking and talking and, and you have to be careful because people can say anything without having any basis of, authority to say those things and um, that got me to thinking of um, how people in life can say anything about you but the Lord says today check your source material where are you getting it from because um Um, source materials c- can be cr- credible or some source material is not credible and um, not very often on Crime Junkie because their source material is, is usually always credible. It's a great show, but when when they get sources from on online um like message boards or not a credible source they will say uh keep in mind this this source is from um online it's just a person saying it it's it's not a very credible person, so be aware of it. Um, Cause sometimes we, our source material comes from 
ourselves in life. Like we look at our our life and draw certain conclusions, but those certain conclusions are not the right source material. We're not getting it from the right source. We're getting it from what we think and what we feel. But we know the ultimate way to get our information about ourselves as believers is from God. So check your source material. Where are you getting that whole thing that you're you you'll you'll you're nobody you'll you'll be nobody and whatever you where are you where are you getting that negative uh source that's here are you getting it from you are you getting it from people are you getting it from other sources the number the number one source for our material about ourselves and about our life, life's lives have got to be Jesus. He's the number one source. He's he's where we get our power and our strength. Because if if we have a broken plug, um, and the plug is broken, the the plug outlet is broken and we put a broken plug in there it's not going to work it's just going to it it, it may it may plug in but it's not going to work because the source is bad so maybe your life is not going well or your relationship is not going well, or your career is not going well, because where you're getting your information is the wrong source. So the Lord says today, I hear him say, yes, Lord, check your material. Check your material. And the number one source material you can, you can find is the word of God, is what you're saying, thinking, feeling, perceiving. Is it matching up with the word of God or is it just something that you think that you should do or whatever? Um, Because um, we like to think that we are our source but we are not. We are just human beings. The source of our lives is Jesus Christ. And I know I know we as human beings like to think that we are in control of our own destiny and we are the captains of our own fate and stuff because because we like to depend we like to sit we like to believe that we uh, as human beings are in are independent of any other source but we're not all human beings all life is created by god is created by a being that loves us, a being that wants the best for us, a being with thoughts and feelings and plans for us. And it is just amazing to know that you you were not the source of this thing, so you don't have to worry about it. You you do have choices to make. You can refuse the source and try and go it alone. God knows I've I've tried that and it <laughs> it hasn't worked out. But when I put my 
my hand in Christ's hand. It has, it has not always been easy, but it's been just so amazing and awesome and beyond, beyond a learning experience. It's been good for me because although it's been rocky and challenging, um, I've always come out on the other side richer and growing. And I think that that's the, that's the same, that's the thing about having the right source material. See, the right source of material gives you the right information. Could you imagine if um, Crime Junkie got all their source material from, like, just people who didn't know about the case, who was just speculating or whatever? Do you think it would be the biggest podcast? the biggest true crime podcast like almost ever? Do you think it would have won Apple's true crime podcast of the year? Like three, I think three years in a row? No. One of the reasons why I believe that Crime Junkie is so successful is because they have good source material. They can re- you can rely on them. You can depend on them. You know they won't like tell you something totally, uh, totally off. You know that, that they heard someone say on YouTube, and or YouTube or any other social media site. So you you could tell that they've done their research. Ashley, Britton, the team have have done their research. I was looking on their YouTube channel and they have YouTube extras and they show you how how they put together an episode. How first it goes to um it goes to um researchers and the script writers and the edit then the then they actually um they actually fact check everything and then then it goes to record and then it goes to the editing so great source material takes work to put in. So it's not only checking the source. It's after you get the information, what are you doing with it? Like after after they put together the research and the script and before they record, um what are they doing with it? They're checking. They're they're making sure that it's the right source. That 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 as close as they they can. They're giving listeners right information. Because if they weren't, they wouldn't be a credible podcast where people are actually getting wise information. You see, that's why the word, that's why the Bible is so important to read, because it's the first, it's the first access to right information about God and how he works. I am such a proponent of listening to God hearing his voice, knowing the rhythm, knowing your rhythm with God, speaking with God, all of that. But I've also said, first, before you learn to hear from God, you need to 
need need to learn the the basics of his word. You don't need to know or have read the Bible from cover to cover, but but you have you have got to recognize his voice. And the first way to recognize his voice, you say, is is what he's saying to me in the word of God. And not everything he'll say to you for your own personal life will be in the word of God, but some foundational truth will be found in the word of God. Yes, he's speaking newly every day, but some foundational truth will be in the word of God. Some principle of what he's telling you will be in the word of God. So that's why it is so important to not memorize the word, but know know the basics of the word so you can differentiate what's God and what's you and what's the devil. See, I think that sometimes we are lost because we 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 don't have the right source material. We get our source material from social media. We get our source material from people. We get our source material from other things. The first place that we need to get our source material is from the Lord and from his word, and from that, then once you know the basics of the word, and he begins to speak to you, you can differentiate what's God, what's me, what's the devil. And um, stop letting people be your main source material. Because any advice in in counsel there is safety yes but any advice or any counsel or any wise instruction that people give you have also got to come from that source material stop letting people who don't know your situation or don't know the word of God for your life or don't know the word of God, period, give you their damaged source material. For example, stop letting your mother tell you that all men are bad. Stop letting your father tell you that that women are no good. Because often those people are speaking from hurt and when people speak from hurt they don't speak with a clear mind they don't speak with the right source material they speak with a damaged broken source and there are so many people that are now dealing with the fallout from people's damaged and broken sources because that's what, what they, the, the source material, that was passed on to them. And it goes on from generation to generation. The Lord's saying today, 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 it's time to break the cycle of broken, damaged sources and bring light and healing And he wants to break that cycle today. It is not your fault. You're not damaged goods. You are a child of God. You are not good for nothing. You are good for everything. You are great for everything. You are beyond wonderful. You are purposed by God. The God of the universe saw fit to create you. And no, he used your mother and your father and that sperm and that egg to create you. 
but you didn't come from them. You were an idea in the mind of God. See, that's why I have such... Um, I have a, um, a bit of a quandary when it comes to uh, terminating pregnancies. Um, because um, although I, I understand it, I understand the reasons for it, and I understand that it's a, a woman's body, and I understand that it's all of that, but I believe that every life is God's design. And I don't believe that any life, whether from rape or from uh, a, a mistake or condom slip or birth control slip, is any anybody's choice. Should, should be anybody's choice to take away. And I'm not saying that there aren't reasons for it. Sometimes medical reasons, sometimes just uh, financial reasons, and it seems easier. But the Lord has, has identified that little person to do something great in their lives and and they're called to do something great it doesn't matter if you're if you if you were married it doesn't matter if you were um if you were abused the act of the abuse to me, is different than the result. The act of the abuse will not change or take away the result. Those are two different issues. Yes, deal with the act of the abuse from therapy or, um, or counseling or intense healing. But getting rid of um, a child is not going to um, is not going to stop the fact that you were abused. Those are two different issues. So I I would seriously re rethink that if if that is going to be an option for you and I and and let me say this if you have had an abortion if you are if you are dealing with that let me say I am so sorry for you dear I am. I'm heartbroken for you. And let me say that there's healing on the other side of that. You are not broken. This will not scar you forever. God will and can forgive you. You are loved. You are not damaged. You are not damned to hell. You, you can't you did what you had to with what you knew at the time. You did what you had to with what you knew at the time. You did what you had to with what you knew at the time. And dare anybody judge you. Dare anybody say that you are a bad person. Dare anybody stand in line outside of the woman's family health clinic and hold up signs to curse you? No, 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 honey. 
the Lord would say to you like he said to the woman in the Bible. He said, neither do I condemn you. He'll say, go and sin no more. That's what he said to the woman that was caught in adultery. And that's what I say to you. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He loves you so much, girl. He loves you so much, girl. And he loves that little one. And that little one is in his arms. That little one is in his arms. He's holding that little one in his arms. And he forgives you. You're not a bad person. You did what you did with what you knew at the time. Come into his arms today. I was uh, I was talking about sort of material, not a bo- not abortion, uh, but the Lord wanted me to go there. I don't know why, but check the source. Check the source. And a lot of us are being damaged because of different sources and because of different uh, things. Uh, and because of different uh, things at the time. So the Lord wants me to just say healing is available for damaged sources. Restoration is available for damaged sources. Freedom is available for damaged sources. And... um, You don't have to stay because you've been damaged. There is healing. There is freedom. There is restoration available in Christ today. There's healing. There's freedom. There's restoration. And there's there's joy available today. You don't have, just because you made a mistake, it it doesn't mean that your life has to be ruined forever. That's what the world says. But God says no. He's here to redeem mistakes. He's, he's here for healing. He's there for anybody who wants it. And freedom and healing and restoration is coming today. Check the source. Check the source. Any information you're getting, is it from a person of anger, a person who knows what they're doing, a person who's Known what they're saying. A person who has your best interest at heart. The Lord says today, check the source. Deliverance, healing, blessing, all of that is available. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. It is so awesome to even uh, think about what the Lord wants to do with people today. He wants to restore the broken today. He wants to resource your bad sources. He wants to resource, like re re um redo and renew your bad sources. He wants to bring credible sources into your not credible sources today. And the number one source that he wants today is your 
heart. He wants to be plugged in to the source of your heart today. Your heart's been broken. Your heart's been damaged. Your heart's been bruised. You've made mistakes because you're hurting. You cheated because you were hurt. And you were damaged and you were mad and you just went off. But you know what? That's okay. You're human. There's forgiveness. There's restoration. Yes, your family is mad at you. Yes, your wife or husband is mad at you. Yes, but but there is restoration and healing for that relationship. Will they come back? Will they forgive you? I don't know. But it starts with being forgiven and then forgiving yourself. Being forgiven by God is where it starts. Bring whatever you did, bring your sin to God, and he's just waiting to embrace you and forgive you. And, and then he'll, he'll cause you to what one day at a time, one process at a time. Forgive yourself. Forgiveness is a process. You don't just wake up and say, I forgive myself and that's it. No. Forgiveness is oftentimes a daily um, process that the Lord will take you, you through. And often processes are individual. Sometimes, sometimes that process will include therapy. It will include credible sources. And sometimes that process will be just you and God and just him working stuff out of you. Sometimes he'll take desires away just like that. And sometimes he'll have to work them on you and you'll, you'll just keep going um, back to the same thing until he works it out of you. He he knows what process is good for you. Uh, we we often we we make this mistake as Christian people. We uh, by saying um, the process. We sometimes preach a sermon and think the process that we preach about will work for everybody. No, it won't work for everybody because everybody is different. Every situation is different. Every uh, situation has, has its certain nuances. But what I can say is whatever process God takes you through in your life to get rid of or to deal with whatever sin he, uh, you have in your life, he will do it the way you need it to be done. He will do not the way you want it to be done. Hear me now. He won't do it the way you want it to be done oftentimes, but he'll do it the way you need because you you need things a certain way because of where he's taking you and because your personality so if he if you you were stubborn and not listening he will be a little harder on you than he might be somebody else struggling with the same thing because of where he needs you to go because of we say god knows you and he loves you yes but that's a two-edged sword. God knows you and he loves you just the same. Yes, that's a really good thing. He accepts you. He loves you. Yes, but he also knows what you need to get the character, to get the integrity, to get to be the kind of person 
that you need for his purpose for your life. So he will do what he needs to do to get out of you what he needs for his purpose for your life. Because people say it's find your purpose, find your purpose. Nope. I say find his purpose and what he's called you to do and what part he's called you to play in the kingdom because he's called each and every one of us to play a part. Part, sometimes it's the same part all, all our lives. Sometimes it's different parts depending on what he wants for our lives at different times. Um, because we're all his children. But but um, parents will tell you of children. Each child is different. So why do we think God will t- t- treat each and, and every one of us the same? He will when it comes to his love and stuff like that. But when it comes to what he needs out of us or what he wants out of us or what he wants to see in us, the process will be different. It's like parents. You you love your children all the same and all that stuff. But when you want them to do something, depending on their personalities, you know what to do what to say to what child to get them to do what you want them to do. You know what process it will it will take. Same thing with God and his children. And I think and I think it's not one size fits all. It's actually finding uh, your rhythm with God and God's rhythm with you. And plugging into the right source material. First is the Word of God, is the written Word of God, and then it's learning how He speaks to you, how He communicates with you. So thank you guys for today. I really enjoyed talking about source material with you. Take care. Bye.
is done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people hear the Lord. see you later and the best source material besides the word of God is worship so give him glory today give him honor give him praise even even though you think you're not right just tell the devil you know what that was yesterday today I'm a new person and don't let him show you pictures of who you were just just say the devil I rebuke you that is not who I am anymore and understand that you are a new creature and understand that you will fall and you will fail but he'll be there to catch you in every everything that you're doing that you're doing that it that is not of God he will he will Restore it. He knows why you're doing it. And he will restore it and and cause you to find better ways to deal with whatever it is. So neither does he condemn you. Go and sin no more. God bless you. See you next week. There is now no condemnation in Christ. There is now no condemnation in Christ. So that the, the Lord doesn't condemn you. The devil loves to condemn you, but check the source material. I break the spirit of condemnation by the power of the Holy Spirit. I break the spirit of condemnation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Devil, you cannot condemn me. Or... Or any, or any of the Lord's beautiful children. Go back to hell from whence you came. We see you. We see your lies. Get your hands off God's people. Get your hands off the generation. They are not lost. It's just undiscovered potential. It's just that they're taking they're taking cues from the wrong source. But I see a generation that is coming back to God. I see a generation that won't lift up his name. I see a generation rising. I see a generation stirring. I see a generation groaning, crying out for the blood of Jesus, for the love of Jesus. I see a generation that is going to flow in God's spirit, in God's power. I see a powerful generation. I see children just rising up, 
start proclaiming the name of Jesus. I see healings. I see restoration. You know, I, I declare that the chains are being broken. Families are being restored. People are being delivered. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come now, Lord Jesus, and restore. Come now, Lord Jesus, and heal. Come now, Lord Jesus, and bring forth power. Break every chain. Only your name can break every chain. Every bad choice. Every habit, God. You can break it. Bring something new. There's a new thing coming. There's a new thing coming. You say in your word, Lord, behold, I do a new thing. And I believe that there is a new thing coming for this generation. No more apathy. I see a generation that will rise strong. I see a generation of of women that their husbands will rise up and call them blessed. I see a generation of men that are strong. We keep on saying what is wrong with this generation. It it is time for us to declare what is right with this generation. It's time for us to start speaking things that be not as though they were. Yes, Lord. We praise you, we adore you, we bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Lord, bring the light. Shine your holy light on this generation. Shine your holy light into this dark world, into this world of murder, Lord Jesus. Immorality, Lord Jesus. Shine your holy light in the name of Jesus. Amen. Teach us. Teach us, God. Teach us how to operate like you would in this generation. Teach us how not to judge people, but teach us how to love them in spite of our not understanding their different lives. Show us how to how to um, communicate with those who are different from us, with different lifestyles or um, life journeys. Show us how to. Um, Proclaim your gospel to those communities that we don't understand, that we try to ignore, that we just judge and we don't understand. Teach us and show us how. Teach us to be human to the to those that we don't understand, because we often are human to those that we do understand to other Christians, other believers, but those whose lifestyles differ from ours, those whose opinions differ from ours, we don't even try to understand them. We don't even try to communicate with them on a human level, but teach us how to do so. Bring us to books and resources and all of those stuff, different agencies, that will help us understand people that we don't understand. Bring those people into our lives and teach us how to understand them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Teach us how to talk to them with love or understanding, not hate or not hate and vitriol. For too long, we've been seen as people of hate and 
vitriol and closed mindedness. But Lord, teach us how to be a people of understanding, a people of wisdom, a people of compassion, and a people of love. In the name of Jesus, amen.